My hair looks poo poo. 38 weeks. Bouncing on my ball. And we're also doing a day of eating vlog. Megan just said everyone's so annoying. I'm not in a good mood today. Everyone at the gym is just so like, oh, why is she here? She's so pregnant. Were they? No, no one said anything. But like men just stare at my belly and it's like, get out of my face. You snacking? I'm in taller. Yeah, because we got to thaw the ground turkey, so I need a snack. I'm defrosting some ground turkey for breakfast. Cheese. Raw Emmentaler. It's the best. Swiss. Kimmy on the block, block, baby, block, baby, what? Kimmy on the block, block, baby. Bitch. 32 shot, block, baby, block, baby, what? 32 shot, block, baby. Block, baby. Kimmy on the block, block, How's it going? First meal. And I did have a bulletproof coffee this morning like I do every morning. It was about 7 a.m. Maybe a quarter cup of coconut milk, canned coconut milk, a tablespoon of ghee, and like a teaspoon of MCT oil, and a little bit of stevia, flavored stevia. Cinnamon vanilla. Yeah. How'd you know? Because that's the one you always use. No, I've been mixing it up. But I'll link these flavored stevias below. I like them a lot. Yeah. I like the English coffee. <laughs> we get them on Amazon. Lunch. It's about noon, 12.30. Yeah, recording videos. The best weight loss tip is honestly just stay busy. Just do work, yeah. Like Netflix marathons and weight loss is not, you can't do it. It's not They're mutually exclusive. Yeah. And then I just got some salt. So I have an avocado, half an avocado. And then I have the other half in my bowl. <clears throat> ground turkey, avocado. Change it up, ground turkey. Avocado, farm cherry tomatoes that Matt ordered for me. And then I also have some cheese that I cut up on top. And then I just have Ground turkey is probably like a little over eight ounces. I had more than half, probably 10 ounces. And eggs and garlic, four eggs. Since the turkey is 95% lean, which we usually do like 80, 20 ground beef, so it's really high protein, a lot lower fat. Did you cook it in anything? Yeah, so I added like one tablespoon of lamb tallow to the whole thing together. And then I added like another one and a half tablespoons just to my personal dish here. I get in these routines of just making the same go-to meals. But I've been making this one usually with ground beef, not with ground turkey. It really fills me up. Cause usually like around three, four, like an hour or two before dinner, food starts creeping into my head again, right? But when I have this meal, not as much. I had it once with him, I couldn't even finish it. It's not like enjoyable either. Blah. The spectrum of delicious is just so out of whack though. Cause you know, Cheesecake Factory. Are you talking about the cheesecakes or like the meals? The cheesecakes. Oh. Things aren't supposed to be that delicious. So yeah, when you're going by that scale, this is nothing. But on the scale of like actual food, it's pretty high on the delicious meter. Mega's filming her pregnancy series right now. Yep. I love the shirt too. Thank you. I've still just been buying my normal sized clothing because I'm like not trying to invest in a lot of maternity clothing. So this is like a shirt that I'm gonna wear postpartum and when I'm just like normal size too. Right now I'm about to uh, record my hospital bag video, which I'm excited about. I had Braxton Hicks one day and then I panicked. No one knows what that is. Yeah, women do. I had Braxton Hicks contractions, which is like essentially fake uh, labor contractions, like kind of your body preparing. And Matt wasn't here that day all day, so I panicked and I immediately got my bag together, printed out my baby plan, and so now I'm just ready to go at any moment. And comment below, how do you guys feel about the word influencer? Stable? I don't know if it's stable. Two days ago we went to like a dinner party thing and I was like describing what I did and I was like, yeah, we own our own business. We have a website, we do YouTube. And the guy's like, oh, you're an influencer. And I was like, ah, uh, no, I don't think so. I hate using that word. Yeah. I think, I think influencer is just too heavily used. One other thing I dislike is if you find someone on Instagram with like 7,000 followers and their descriptor of themselves is public figure. No, even if you have like 50,000 followers, if you're a public figure, like you're not Bill Clinton, would you say you're a public figure? No. Okay. No. I'm, we're, we're not I'm never in public. The other day when Mega went to her waxing appointment, the lady said, we should probably add on a belly wax for you. You want to just go ahead with the belly wax? No. Well, basically. So do you want to add on the belly? And I was like, no, I'm going to wait till after the baby's born because the hair is going to keep growing. Your belly gets very hairy in case you didn't know, and I'm not going to show it. Show it. Paw. Good boy. He's being so good today. Are you being a good boy? So we're sitting here recording videos, and this is what Julius does now to try getting our attention. He goes upstairs and stares at us like we care. We don't care, Julius. Yeah, now he doesn't care. 
Yeah. We're the ones who care. He's playing us a fool. He's mugging us off. That's what I learned from watching Love Island UK. I've learned so much British slang. Mug off is one. What does that mean? Obviously. To like take advantage or make a fool of someone. Hence Julius mugging us off. To pie off is like to <laughs> dump them. Oh really? Yeah. So they'll be like, no, I didn't pie him off. He pied me off. They use the word rotter for girls that are like not attractive, which is really insulting in my mind, right? He's a rotter. What do we say in America? Butterface, I guess. You know, I guess we say really mean things too, but their words are so funny. We're going to play some baby cries and see how Julius responds. She's going to be such a good mom. She came running. She was laying in bed all day. She was upstairs in Julius's crate. She would do crying dogs. I had to update you on my snack attack. So Mega had some of these pork rinds earlier. I had one of these bulletproof bars. I've been sort of craving these a lot. I need to stop eating them. I need to quit snacking, guys. I also had one of these fat snacks cookies, which you can see I'm working my way through that box. I think I'm gonna have like an August resolution of no snacks, no, no packaged snacks. Let's see if I can do it. Dinner time. Hey, move. You're pushing him into the baby. Move. He's such a baby himself. I know, now he doesn't want to leave. So we found these the other day, Mega found them. It's Lily's brand. They're the best. And it's peanut butter cups. I had one, it was I. Really? The macros aren't on here, they're on the package that they came in, I guess. So I got them at Whole Foods and a lot of people have since said that they found them at Sprouts as well. Then I've snacked too much, so I'm not that hungry for dinner. But we have these leftover Chicken drumsticks, we went to a party. A baby shower. So we met people. I met a lot of people, really cool people. It's someone that I had met off of the Peanut app, the Pregnant Woman app. Yeah, it's great. I realized everyone at this thing was very successful. That's the impression I got. I guess I'm not like looking at their financials and like what their job, I'm not verifying all this info, but I'm assuming based on talking to them and they seem like they were successful people. And it got me thinking, you gotta surround yourself with what you wanna become. Before we jump into that, do you want me to say the macros <laughs> on the lilies? Yeah. For two of those pieces, it's 130 <laughs> calories, 11 fat, four protein, and then 14 carbs, four fiber, seven grams of erythritol, three net carbs for two pieces. I always eat one and that feels really satisfying. Seven grams of erythritol is quite high for that little thing. For two. Oh, for two, okay. Don't you feel satisfied with one? Do you need to eat two? It's not good enough tasting to where I want to eat two. Oh, it's so good. So it's not even one tenth as good as the Eating Evolved brand ones that are- They're very different, but people don't like the Eating Evolved ones. I know. So I think you, watching this are gonna like the lilies ones. <laughs> okay, now you can jump into. Oh, you gotta surround yourself with successful people. 100%. You become the average of your friends. Me, for example, had great friends growing up. And then I also feel the same way about my friends and my brother. My brother is very influential on in my life too. He's the one that's given me like the drive. He's also an entrepreneur. My dad's an entrepreneur, so I kind of had that going for me. And then my friends just like, cared about school and they they were athletes they played sports and you know they weren't like getting into like drugs and stealing yeah. from convenience shops you know because i had those friends too but my parents wouldn't let me hang out with them which was now looking back great of my parents because those were the cool kids the kids that had no parental supervision they were the cool ones you sure. know they could just do whatever they wanted they could drink, drink at they wanted. age 12. yeah Come on over, let's have some beers, we're 12. Like, that's yeah. not how you're supposed to do it. <laughs> Thinking back, my parents were pretty good parents. It reminds me like a lot of the time people message about their friends, like hating on their diet and stuff. Yeah, you don't want friends like that. And it's hard to say just cut your friends off. You should be able to, over time, get 
the feeling like is your friend rooting for your actual success or are they just trying to keep you down so that they're like on a similar level to you right like you don't have to cut them out especially if they're a childhood friend but addressing it at the very least right hey what's going on i i thought you'd be happy for me like i'm having all this success why are you being so negative about this new lifestyle change or you know whatever the case is here's yeah. how you know what type of person your friends are one of your other friends like a third person starts doing something good they got a promotion and your other friend wants to trash talk them about mm -hmm. it to you you know like that's that starts rubbing off on you because then you're a person who engages in trash talking others. It's just like slippery slope, right? Cause I was just reading this book and it's basically, it clicked with me when it was like, if you just hang out with criminals, crime becomes normal, you end up committing crime at some point. It becomes just more normal to you. If you hang out with smart people that study, that becomes normal to you. You become a person that studies. Baby's bouncing all over the bladder and I have a UTI and it's like the most painful thing ever. I may have told this story before, um, I made a friend off of the Bumble app. This mm -hmm. was a while ago. And before I was pregnant, she was so intimidated and like challenged by the fact that I was on a keto diet. So she would constantly talk about how I don't eat carbs. And she'd like tell the waitress, she'd be like, oh, Meg is so miserable. She doesn't eat carbs. She punishes herself. And then it got to a point where I just had to ghost her. I met her once. And she brought it up a few times. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it was just very transparent projection though. It was like poison. So I was like, yeah, it's just like I can't be, why, why would we? I like laughed. Friends? I gave her a chuckle and stuff, but I was like, really like, eh, okay. so did I. But after like five times of hanging out and you like making me feel bad about my adult choices and you can't accept your own, she's eating like all the fries and potatoes as she's like ramming them down her mouth. She's like, you're making me feel so fat. I have to eat all the potatoes. It's like, <laughs> Dude, you don't, you're choosing to, and Just it's not that big thing. of a deal. Exactly, it's not that big of a deal. Well, I also have a lot of good friends that aren't really driven. Like who? The idea guy, like there's this one friend I have, he has so many ideas for businesses he wants to start. And I'll send him messages like every couple weeks, I'm like, have you started on this thing yet? Trying to motivate him, but I just know it's never gonna happen. He's just such a good-hearted person. He's really nice though. Yeah, he's a great person. I feel like we've talked about that before, but yeah. It seems to come up a lot though. I'm realizing what a big issue it is for a lot of people because we don't really run into this issue that much. I think the hardest part though that we get hit with sometimes question-wise is like, what do you do if it's your, if it's not like a friend, but it's like your spouse, right? You're married to this person. Yeah. You've both gotten overweight together. You want to get healthy together, but like That's tough. he or she is just like, no. It's the same thing as like if you have a high school sweetheart, right? When you mm -hmm. get married and you're not really you're who you are yet. Like six years later when you actually become a real adult, you're like, wow, I want to do all these things and my partner doesn't want to do most of those. They want right. to just kind of do what we've been doing. People rub off on each other so you really don't like diverge that much. But sometimes it happens, I guess, and it must be tough. Especially because if you're in that position now, I'm not gonna be like, find a new partner. You're not just gonna break up a marriage and maybe you are genu genuinely happy. They just don't wanna get healthy with you. I think my advice has always been for people around me is don't marry the first person you date if it's in high school. Like Matt, for example, he was, you were in a six, eight year relationship with his high school sweetheart. And yeah. could you imagine being with her? No, well, I really dodged a bullet, but I <laughs> I don't know if this is for everyone, but for me, it was just a scarcity mindset. I'm like, this is the best I'm ever going to find. Yeah. It was lack of confidence in myself yeah. because, you know, I was at my prime. I was like a college athlete. In a couple of years when I'm not a college athlete and I'm not in the NBA, then what am I left with? Yeah. You know, <laughs> but like, really, you should be confident. It's like, oh, when I'm done with the NBA, I'm going to be a successful person that can have whatever he wants, have my pick of any woman I want. That's how you should be thinking about things. It shouldn't be like scarcity, coming from scarcity, which is what it was for me. And if you are with someone and you're happy, like do my friends and my partner fall in line with where I wanna be in the future? You ideally wanna to grow together, but if you just date one person for your entire life, that scares me. If you have the secret, let us know down below to like 30, 40, 50 years of happy, successful marriage. We don't really talk about it though. We're not like, I wanna be with you forever. Well, now that we have a kid, I'm just I like, think... in 10 years, we'll definitely be together. We'll probably have three kids. Like, we talk about, like, things in five or 10 years, frame, frame set. I guess I want to be in a rocking chair with Matt one day on the porch, but, like, 
Do I even want to be there? It'll be fun. I'll have like new hobbies probably. I want us to be like running a 5K on the beach when we're like 70. No, you don't even want to run 5Ks now. I know, but when I'm well, 70, Well, the thing, I'll you're a it. small Indian woman, so you're just going to age very gracefully. That's true. I'm going to never look 70. I'm going to not age well at all. Is that it? Are you going to have more snacks? Yeah, I'm going to have more snacks. Okay. Well, I'm going to have the Lily's cup. That's for me. Oh, he's my baby. Sleeper. Night, night. Kiss. Kiss. Thank you. He's so good at kissing. Wait, stop! What? Oh my god, did you hear his throat? <laughs> he was just trying to Oh, he was trying bark. to bark. I don't, will you see me next week? Who knows? Will we have a week 39 vlog? What are your guys' bets? Comment below. Will we have one? I think we'll have two more still. <laughs> All right, we'll probably see you next week. <laughs>